Curry, Mr. Bejeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. The confusion, the problems with language. A lot of times Alzheimer's patients have great memories about when their kids were little and a long time ago but they can't remember what day it is today, what year it is, who the president is. But the intact memory from years past, that's one of the things that separates Alzheimer's from some of the other dementias. Um, changes in visual, um, perceptual is a big one. A lot of times Alzheimer's patients are having trouble walking. They become very imbalanced because they can't, the floor kind of changes and shifts on them. Especially carpeting. If somebody went over the carpet with a vacuum cleaner, and you know how it leaves those little marks from the vacuum cleaner? That can look like a hole to an Alzheimer's patient. One of the things that somebody taught me one time that was, it works like a charm, is if you've got an Alzheimer's patient that you're trying to keep them from leaving the house, if you put a small black area rug in front of the door, it looks like a hole. So they're afraid to walk there. I don't know how you're gonna get them out of the house ever at that point, you know, but <laughs> that was something that I thought was really, Interesting. Sudden changes in mood and personality changes. Somebody, my grandmother had Alzheimer's, and my grandmother was a very sophisticated, very classy lady who never cursed, ever. If we as kids said the word shut up, she thought that we were saying a, a horrible four letter word. But as she became, as she advanced in her Alzheimer's, she had a mouth like a sailor, which was really <laughs> funny and fun, but completely different. I, we didn't even know she knew those words. So there can be some changes there. One of the things that you need to make sure of is that if you do see these kinds of symptoms in yourself or your family members or a neighbor or whoever you're caring for, let's make sure that it's not something like a brain tumor or a little bit of extra fluid in the brain called hydrocephalus. Um, let's make sure that it's not an elder. One of the things that happens, especially with our little old ladies, is if you get a urine infection, you can look like you had a, this like sudden overnight onset of Alzheimer's. If it comes on that quickly, it's probably not Alzheimer's. So we need to go and make sure that it's not something medical that we need to do something about. Um, infections, vitamin deficiencies, depression in elders is a biggie. Depression's huge. It's, it's big. And, and medication side effects. I spend all day long going around helping elders figure out. A really interesting statistic is for those people over the age of 70, I think it's either 70 or 72, that leave their doctor's offices, do you know what the percentage of folks over the age of 70 that go home and take their medications the way the doctor told them to? 19%. 19%? That's not good. That's not good. So um, that's why we help a lot of folks making sure that they're taking their medication properly because that can also cause some things that look like Alzheimer's or make some of the dementias a whole lot worse a lot faster than they need to. Why is it important to get diagnosed? I'm not so sure. There's a big, there's a big controversy and a big discussion going on right now. If you're 50, all right, I'm a little older than that, but if you're 50 and do you want to know now if you're gonna have Alzheimer's later. I think it's a really interest, interesting discussion. Would any of you wanna know now if you were gonna have Alzheimer's later? I see some heads nodding. And maybe you wanna get your stuff in order. You know, maybe you wanna make sure that you get hooked up with your attorney to sign your power of attorney and sign your healthcare proxies and things like that because that's really big. Because if they determine that you aren't sort of all understanding what you're signing, they're not gonna let you sign it, and then it gets really complicated. So there are some good reasons to wanna to know. Planning your future, um, talking about getting into some treatment. I will tell you, I, I have seen some folks um, that we've taken over and gotten the big exam done with Dr. Elevitz, and they've got the big diagnosis, and we get them on some medications. And I have to say, the medications that we're using nowadays are a whole lot better than they used to be. And people are doing a lot better I'll tell you now, if, if there's any of you that are taking Benadryl to get to sleep at night, stop it. Stop it now. Benadryl in an elder is like poison, and you don't clear it, and, and it's causing a whole lot of problems with memory that are not the fault of Alzheimer's or dementia. You're taking Benadryl and you're not clearing it, so it's not a good idea. So the Alzheimer's Association, as Arthur discussed, there's a lot of resources there. 
So call the Alzheimer's Association, go on their website, have a family member go on their website, get some help with that. There's an awful lot of research and a lot of education being done. They can provide lots of support groups. Again, it's the caregivers that we worry about. The Alzheimer's clients themselves are going to get really good care. They're going to get really good care. The caregivers are the ones we always say to the caregivers, you're going to go first because the caregivers are exhausted. And they need lots of support. They need to know where they can get some help. Um, on the island, there's lots and lots of places where you can get help. And I would start with Elder Services. Certainly, you can call me. I left some brochures over on the table, the little table over there by the red chair, if you don't have some already. Certainly, you can call me if you just want to get hooked up into some resources as to where to go to get help. But if you are caring for a family member or someone else that has Alzheimer's, don't wait. Get help and get help early because there's a lot, a lot out there that can help you. Elder Services, um, Elder Services Jackie Cage and all the councils on aging will direct you to Elder Services. We have a wonderful program here on the island with Elder Services. Those gals work their tails off. They provide Meals on Wheels, they provide homemakers, they provide personal care attendance. Often it's funded through MassHealth and other programs. Um, you may have to pay a little stipend, but it's not usually something that can't be handled. You could have something called basic home care, where elder services would contract with the VNA or one of the other home care agencies here on the island now, and some, somebody out to do shopping for you, or to do your laundry if it's in the basement and you can't get down and up, to run the vacuum around, which can you know be difficult as you're getting older. Um, basic home care will give you about three hours a week. ECOP, or an extended, extended home care benefit, will give you about six hours a week. It's a great way to start. And then there's other, they can do some med management, they can do some helping you with paying bills. There's a lot of resources available in our community um, to help the caregivers or to help the early Alzheimer's folks that are staying at home alone right now get started and get some help. And the earlier you get involved in those programs, the better you're going to do because everybody knows you and we kind of grow with you. So. Thank you very much, Sandy. Uh, and one of the great things about all of these programs, most people, until they, they, they kind of have talked to folks at Elder Services, assume that these programs are only available if you have no assets because they're used to thinking of it in mass health terms and for the programs that, that would provide a lot, a lot of care to Mary if she was staying at home or later if she, needed, if she needed more help, like in a nursing home setting. You do have to have, there are asset issues, but not for these. So if you're Frank and Mary, if you've got a house, $400,000, Frank's got his IRA at $200,000, they've got savings of $200,000, so Frank and Mary have a total of $800,000 in assets. Frank has income of $2,250 a month, that's $1,500 a month from Social Security and $750 from a pension. Mary has income of $750 a month, half of Frank's Social Security. So they're making $3,000 a month. These people can qualify to get the home care options that Sandy just described. Depending on their income, they're going to pay a small copay for that, but they're going to get a significant benefit just by calling Elder Services, having Elder Services come out and realize that there are some things that they could use some help for. They're going to get a lot of the other things, like Meals on Wheels. They're going to get uh, the, the support services, the support group services, help with med management, a whole bunch of things, either for nothing or with a very small copay. Jackie Cage was here the last time we did a presentation because we were talking about what happens if Mary has more serious levels of dementia. So I didn't want to drag her back again because she does so much of this stuff. But she had talked about all those programs. Did I ask everybody to shut off their phone? Oh my God, that's me. Sorry about that. Uh, please shut off your phones. So, so the, 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 ask, the things are available to you. At this point, Frank and Mary may want to do some planning for, for, for what would happen if Mary's dementia continued, and I'm going to talk about that at the end. But the main thing to know is connect with these folks now and, and find out. And find out what is available to you. There's certainly not, nothing bad is going to happen if you call elder services. A couple of other things from what Sandy talked about. One, try to get involved in research. If you know, if you, if you have the early stages of Alzheimer's, then you're the kinds of folks that the people at BU and at Mass General, there, there, are, there are 29 centers of Alzheimer's research in this country. Two of them are in Boston. Two of them are in Boston, right? They're doing a ton of programs for which 
The Alzheimer's Association coordinates the volunteers through something called the Trial Match Program. If so, if you, if you have a family history of Alzheimer's, if you're having early stage dementia, call them and participate. I know it's hard. My wife and I have had this conversation because my mother died from Alzheimer's. She died in a nursing home. My oldest brother recently got a, a very, very early stage diagnosis. So, I, you know, it's at some point you can see it coming. So I'd like to participate, but my wife says, you shouldn't participate. It's going to make you too depressed. You're going to be sure you're going to be going. So I know it's really hard, and we haven't figured it out yet ourselves, right? So I, so I feel guilty preaching because I'm not participating in a trial match right now. But it's something that you should consider. It's something that you need to consider. Uh, a couple of other things. One of the goals to me here, and I think we're going to talk about this more, is I think Martha's Vineyard is perfectly positioned to be the place where you can provide seamless care for Alzheimer's. This should be a place where no matter how old you are, you can live here until you die. Leslie Clapp is doing a lot with that right now through the advances that she's made in the, in the daycare program, and I know that she's talking about the expansions here. I know that Sandy has been promoting a, a CNA course here, a certified nurse assistant course here, to improve uh, the number of people who are well-trained to be dealing with folks, among other things, people who have Alzheimer's. This place could be the model place, and I am really, I am persuaded, that's one of my New Year's resolutions. I want to just be doing more and more towards seeing how we can make this place, new, uh, uh, right here, Martha's Vineyard, kind of the example for the country. Um, well, that's all. So, a couple of other things. 